The big Friday, Chris, right? The Black Friday of all Fridays is uh, is coming next week. So uh, pretty exciting. Uh, I know we're busy. You're busy. Uh, Dom is busy. Uh, and I know Dom's been working on the warehouse and all that stuff that he's got going on. Those pictures were amazing, by the way. Lots of uh, really cool stuff that you got going on there, uh, converted over your showroom to uh, to be a little bit more specific. So maybe we can talk a little bit about that. But Chris, why don't you go ahead and get things started and uh, kind of let us know what kind of news are we talking about? I mean, I kind of know, but I want you to let everyone else know. If they don't know, what's some big news that we're talking about that we're kind of excited about? If you haven't been paying attention this week, Amazon rolled out something that I personally think is really cool. And Scott, I think you, uh, you're you kind of on board that this is a cool thing. Oh, uh, well. yeah. I, I posted a, a screen capture video in the group earlier this week, and we talked about it with a lot of people inside TAS Breakthrough U. And actually, it looks like a lot of you guys have already started rolling this out. What I'm talking about here is Amazon rolled out a feature called coupons. And a lot of us have it inside of our account. I have seen one or two accounts now, Scott, that don't have access to it yet. Okay. But it is something that people will probably be getting. So coupons is actually different from promotions where you get your promo codes that we use for launches and discounts and all of those kinds of things. And basically what coupons is, is it's a way for people to see that there is a discount on a product and you can target anybody on Amazon. So they'll, they'll see it in like the search results page. If they're searching for garlic press, they'll throw up a little banner that says there's a discount available, right? It's a coupon. They'll throw that up, which is potentially really cool for bringing in some sessions. But the thing that I think is really, really, really cool with this is you actually have the ability to only show that discount to people who have looked at certain ASINs yeah. or who have bought certain ASINs. So there's two scenarios here that I think are really cool. The first is like an abandoned cart ad, right? Mm -hmm. So people who have looked at your ASIN before and then come back, I wanna offer them a discount to try to get them to buy. But the other thing that's really cool is say your competitors, or if you sell a product that's an accessory, right? Let's say you sell tires for a Jeep, if they could buy a Jeep on Amazon, you could target Jeep as an ASIN, all of the different Jeep ASINs. And mm -hmm. anybody that bought a Jeep, when they come look at your tires, they'll see that there's a discount for Jeep owners, right? And you can actually even phrase it that way if you wanted to. Jeep owners save 15% on this product. Now, Chris, all you have to do is click it and it redeems it for them. Let me ask you something. So would you consider this to be kind of like a sponsored ad in a sense? Because we're, we're kind of like able to get it in front of whoever we want for searches or for ASINs or just even our own customers. We're paying for it. Why don't you talk a little bit about what it costs? Uh, not mentioning like the discount, but like what's Amazon charging us and how does that work? So the thing that's really cool about it is you only get charged when somebody actually redeems it and checks out with it. So you could show it to anybody you want, just like a sponsored product ad mm -hmm. on Amazon, mm -hmm. right? You only pay when somebody clicks. Exactly. But in the case of coupons, Amazon does charge a redemption fee. So that, I think it's 60 cents if I remember correctly. Right. For somebody to do that. So if you were discounting the product by a dollar, it would actually cost you a dollar 60. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's no different than a sponsored ad, right? No. We're able to target people specifically with these coupons. We can call it out. We can make it obvious that it's for them if the product is for a specific use. And that's something, Scott, that I was thinking about this morning that I really want to try to play with. And you know the product that I'm talking about um, because one of the products that we have is an accessory. You could do something really cool where you say, you know, 15% off, like I said, on the Jeep thing, 15% off for Jeep owners, mm -hmm. right? And then anybody that's a Jeep owner would see that if they land on your product page and go from there. Now there's three or four different places where these things are popping up. If you're targeting everybody, if you're just running it, Amazon will show it in the search results. So if somebody typed in garlic press, people would see it there. They're not doing that right now with targeted offers, but they are showing it on your product page. So if you can get them onto your product page, that's when people would see it. And to me, that's totally cool with me. I would obviously rather it be everywhere, even sure. on the targeted offer but Amazon doesn't want to kind of pull that traffic away. They're waiting till somebody makes a decision, which makes sense from Amazon's perspective because they don't want to give people the wrong product. If you understand what I'm saying? Like oh, yeah. Yeah. the whole point of an Amazon search result is to give the most relevant product to somebody. Mm -hmm. Amazon understands that the coupon is a conversion rate booster. And so they don't want to serve that and, and change the way that the search results might end up displaying products just for a targeted offer. So if you're offering it to everybody, they're cool with it. Yeah. If you're targeting it, they're only gonna show it on the product pages or uh, Amazon is actually rolling out a coupons page for all Amazon customers so they can go and see the offers that are targeted for them, mm -hmm. which I think yeah. is pretty cool as well. The one, the one, I guess, really big thing I wanna highlight here, and I know we've talked about this, and Dom, you've talked about this a lot, like when you're launching multiple products in a brand, 
uh, you you tend to start getting some overlap. You start to get you start to get some crossover sales. You start to get that stuff. And you know we've talked a lot about this. The cool thing about this is the one thing that got me really excited is if someone one of your customers, okay, Amazon knows who your customers are because they generate it or they you know process the sale. We can target those people with our newest product or with something that's related to what they just bought. Now again, we've talked about this in the past. Is a customer worth more than just someone that's searching? Well, I know the answer, and I think you do, Chris, and you do, Dom. If someone just bought something, it's a lot easier for me to say, hey, before you leave, do you think you need this additional thing? So again, I go back to my pool thing, because it's most recent. Hey, Scott, you just bought some erratic acid. Do you need a brush for that? Yeah, I do. Okay, buy the brush. And oh, by the way, we've got some test strips for you. You want to buy them too? Yes, I do, right? So you just keep adding it to the order. The thing is, is we're able to do that after the transaction has been made now. So that's pretty awesome to be able to do that. So to me, it's even more important now to say, hey, listen, if, you're, if you have a product and you can add another product or another variation, you'd be foolish not to do it. It's going to be easier for you to start to generate additional sales that way than to start brand new from scratch in maybe like a whole nother market. Um, and I go back to uh, Chris, did you, did you read my email today? I did not. You did not read the Friday email. Chris Schaefer, you're fired. Oh, I haven't gotten man. to it yet. I thought you I would have loved that one. <laughs> I, 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 thought, I thought you would have loved that one. Uh, well, I, I referenced uh, a couple of people, um, and um, I, gave, um, I gave them some names. And one of them, uh, the guy's name that I used was Bill, all right? And uh, some of you know that we, we have a friend named Bill, so maybe I'm talking about him, maybe I'm not. But, um, you know, he's got, you know, a pretty good thing going. Okay, with this certain product in a certain brand. Well, wouldn't it pretty be pretty awesome right now if he had another similar product that he could make people aware that just bought it or had bought it in the past? Now, this guy's getting 30,000 plus sessions a day, over 100 sales a day, and he has been for the past two years on one or two SKUs. So wouldn't it be pretty cool if you rolled out a new product, hint, hint, uh, Bill, if you're listening, um, Bill, if you read your email, um, it's basically you're getting comfortable and you're saying to yourself, well, I'll get to it or I'm not really quite sure right now if that's not another reason to launch a similar product to your existing customers that Amazon will target for you for 60 cents if they redeem it, only if they redeem it, it's a lot easier than doing that than starting from scratch. Dom, what's your thoughts on that? No, I Sorry, excuse me. Uh, yeah, for sure. Obviously, if you got the traffic flow, again, uh, we're lucky enough that we have both concepts, the open brand and a, a full brand, so we can roll out something like that. Uh, the coupon process, to me, it's going to eventually, I think this is what's going to happen. It's going to turn into the Vistaprint slash GoDaddy. You mm -hmm. bought this, you want this, this, plus this, plus this. It takes you 25 minutes to check out, yeah. but I think it's going to go that way because they might as well, right? They're already in the checkout phase and they already got your credit card ready. They know you're going to confirm one purchase. It, you know, it brings your average sale up. So I think that's going to go through that. I mean, I agree. Everyone, everyone knows what that is. It's kind of frustrating at once, but sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, I really needed those stands to go with the signs or yeah. Oh, you know, the other day we made some new, some new banners through Vistaprint and uh, the sign standees. If they would have showed it to me, I would have totally forgot about it. So mm -hmm. yep. that kind of helps. So, so yeah, any type for that price, it's not, I mean, 60 cents, a big deal. You're going to pay for that anyways, mm -hmm. regardless whether you're doing you know, the old style giveaways or if you're doing PPC in a second. So uh, I, to be honest, I haven't played around with it. I've been so hectic with, you know, a few, few things here. So I haven't looked at it, but I knew it was there. I'll get one of my teams to look at it. But especially if you have a, a, a full brand, like your, yeah. you know, your, your hot brand that you guys have, you have 10, 12 new SKUs. If you can bring your average sale from one to 1.2 to 1.3, that's going to, bring your average sale price and uh, you're oh, yeah. going to move through more product. But it, it, as far as what you're talking up, about, um, we're actually at 1.23 today, Scott. I don't know if you yeah, saw that. I have not. Crazy. And yeah, I'm that's, curious that's, if, if people are doing that because they're redeeming coupons. I'm curious to see what kind of shakes out. Of well, Chris, crazy. talk a little bit about how you see the redemption too. So they actually have a dashboard. Right. So th there's a dashboard specifically for the coupons. I'm assuming now they ours only started running yesterday because they take like 72 hours basically to get approved. And right. I, I first started playing with this on Tuesday. 
uh, or Monday after, I don't know, beginning of the week. And then mm -hmm. it took till yesterday till they got approved. So they will show you like number of clicks, number of redemptions, budget left, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm assuming it will also show up in the promotions report at the end of the day. Um, I haven't seen it there, but it would be crazy to me if you didn't get all of your promotional data mm -hmm. in one place. Yeah. No, it's, it's pretty exciting. And, and uh, you know, kind of, you know, going back on what we we're talking about, you know, you know, I get a lot of people, they say, like, especially someone like our friend, uh, you know, Bill, and there's another guy that uh, my my wife was uh, talking to, we'll call him Glenn. Um, he actually um, uh, had reached out to my to my wife probably about six to eight, maybe even nine months ago. And, and Glenn, um, or who I'm calling Glenn, if you're watching, uh, not picking on anyone, but, um, you know, had, had sent my, my wife uh, a message and said, you know, Hey, what do you, what's up? Are you, know, I see you guys are moving to South Carolina and she's like, yeah. And he's like, well, you know, are you guys leaving because of work? Are you being relocated? And she's like, no, we actually want warmer weather. Our kid just graduated and we just want to move South. And he's like, wow, it must be nice. What do you, what do you guys do anyway? You know? And she's like, oh, we, we work from home. And she started telling him. So fast forward, he started listening to the podcast, got excited. Wanted to get into this into this business. Actually went through 1K Fast Track. Had some pretty good success there. But just checked in with my wife the other day, and she actually or uh, he actually messaged her, just kind of kidding around, and said, "Hey, Lisa, do me a favor. Look over on Scott's desk and find one of those products that he's hiding over there for me, so I can go ahead and launch." And she's like, "Wait a minute, what? You haven't launched yet? Like, why? Why haven't you launched?" And he goes, "I just I don't know. I've had a few products I thought that would be good, but I just haven't taken action." So again, it's one of those things, and you know. I'm bringing this up not to pick on anybody. I'm just using them as an example. I've done the same thing. We've all done the same thing. We've kind of sat on a product or we weren't sure, but here's the deal. Once you get some type of traction or at least you get started, you can then start expanding either in that market or other areas, okay? I think once you get to this place, like us right now, Chris, you, Dom, and a few of your brands, when you get to that place, there's more products that you can launch. Like there's just, there's more than I can launch. And another little side tip and, and uh, Dom, I want your thoughts on this. Um, you know, um, I talked to my good friend, Mike Jackness the other day who has four pretty successful brands. Um, pre I think pretty much all of them are seven figure brands at this point. He just got back from China and their plan moving forward in uh, 2018 is to launch one product, get this, a week. Okay, now he said to me, it's not necessarily about finding the home runs. It's about finding consistent sales across all products. So whether you have a product that sells four a day and you have one that sells 12 a day, that right there across the brand will get you to the 100 or 200 or 300 sales a day. Dom, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, that's a theory that I've always, that I've got from all the 20 years plus of retail ARB is, uh, you know, when we first started this project, it's almost four, it's gonna be five years this year, private labor pretty well. Not the open brand, that's only on the second, but the other brands that we have, three brands. Uh, you could launch one, two products and be very successful and get, you know, we got to seven figures pretty fast with three, four products. But to honestly, to hit a home run now and to go to seven figure, it's going to be hard with three, four SKUs. You need five, six, 10, 12, 15. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you're building a brand. Most brands you could put up to 15, 20. Uh, and I might, that's why I'm kind of changing my business around because I want to focus on private label more than, you know, what I'm doing. And yeah, if we could, you know, my goal was always to release one a month. Yep. That was our goal. And that got pushed to two a month, you know, or one every two months. And now it's like one every three months because I'm so hectic. But one a week is fabulous. And you're right. You do not need to have 30, 40 units a day if you're going to re release two to 300 ASINs. Mm. But again, there's a lot of ways to do it. You could just wholesale generic stuff and put it on. To me, that's not really private label. You know, you're just grabbing something for four bucks and trying to make a dollar fifty on it, mm. throwing on, like actually creating a brand like you guys are doing. At the end, you'll have 25 ASINs and I'll get you to your seven, you know, seven figures. Mm -hmm. So uh, to be honest, all our companies, even the open brand, we are minimum, minimum 20 ASINs, like 20 and then variations. So 20 ASINs with three H, you're talking about 60 to 70 ASINs per brand that I have. And that's what you need to, and that's how you get the volume. So the reason why this helps is one, it gives your customer, your consumer more. You yep. take up way more space on the Amazon pages. Uh, if something runs out, you've got your other products to take care of you. And if you're having a bad week, there, nobody could tell me that they have the same day. Okay, I do 3,300 just today and tomorrow I'm going to do 1,100 and then 4,000 mm. or, or 200 and then 800 and two. It, it always changes like that, right? It's never always 300 a day, exactly. 300 a day. So what happens is when you have all these 
ASINs, it helps you. It helps you, you know, keep you keep your level up at the end of the month. You're still going to do your, let's say, thirty thousand or fifty thousand a month. One day might be higher and lower, so that's what helps you. Mm -hmm. And it also keeps you fresh. Do you know what I'm saying, Scott? Chris, oh, yeah. it keeps you in. If you know, all right, again, here we're going to our good buddy Bill. Good selling stuff, but you get too comfortable when you start selling 100, 200 a day mm -hmm. on stuff, and then you, then you forget, you lose, you lose your grip. Especially now with the competition coming in, when he when they first started. You know, he was the only one. Now there's a hundred people. Mm -hmm. You know, and we kind of have that in some of our of some of our trend stuff, especially if you're in trends like we kind of are yeah. in our open brand and stuff. You get competitors hitting you left and right. So you always got to keep thinking of new product, new product. Mm -hmm. But I want to get to the point that we're back to yeah, one a week would be great, and that's yeah. how you do it. Yeah, it, it, it's that that's very aggressive. Um, and but you know the well, thing is to get to that level, you got to have a team to help you. Um, you got to have a team. Yeah, you can never do it yourself. Currently, right now, I even said to my partner because I was telling uh, them about that, you know, that conversation, and I was talking to Chris about it, and we're like, "Whoa, like one a week? That's that's over fifty products a year. Like that that's a lot, right?" So what I said was, "But you know what is reasonable? Like one a month. Yeah, like one exactly. a month is reasonable, right?" And that's going to be, I, I think, I think going into mm -hmm. 2018, that's going to be our goal is to launch, you know, additionally to what we already have, one new SKU a month, mm -hmm. and that could have a couple of variations with it, um, yeah. but. Again, we're not looking at all the products that necessarily the numbers are 100 units a day. We're looking at some that can just add five or 10 units per day. But we know that those will also lead people that they needed to buy the fishing rod. So they're going to buy the lures. They're going to buy the, the you know, whatever, the, the line, fishing line, uh, the weights, the, you know, the, the vest, whatever, right? They're going to buy those other things. So we just have to keep adding other things that our buyer could purchase. Right, right. Um, yeah. and, and really I mean, like, the numbers are the numbers. We, we want to look at the numbers. Like I'm always numbers driven a little bit, mm -hmm. but in sometimes I might say, well, that one isn't the 300 units per month, but it's 200. Why not just add it? If it's, if it's going in our SKU base, like if we're going in there, why not launch it? Right, Tom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you've heard me say it before, right? You know, get rid of the duds, keep the studs, right? I mean, even if you have a bad product, like we have bad products doing three to four a day. You know, maybe we have three or four of them, but we're making five dollars on each of those, so we're right. we're making twenty dollars times four four duds. You know, we're still clearing three four hundred a week times those times a year. It's still ten fifteen twenty thousand dollars in your pocket at the end of the year. Like yeah. you don't worry about those ones, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what you could do. You worry, you know, it's it's like anything, you know, especially in retail art. You're gonna find the really good stuff that you pay five that you can sell for fifty, but you still need to buy those ones that you pay five and sell it for ten. Because you need volume, you need stock, and that's the way you got to look at it. And, and the more ASINs you have, the, the more money you're going to make. It's again, it's it's how you scalability. Again, now to do one a month, I mean, I still find that kind of hard. You still need a lot of, you need capital, and you also need time. Like you need, you know, resources, and you need, you know, team. You need help to do that because it's yeah. just difficult even at and, one and that and that and that can happen it's just a matter of time but yeah. you got to get started my my point is yeah. like you know when you're at that point especially like our like our good friend bill it's like you're at that point right now where you have some really good volume you've got a customer base inside of amazon now they roll out this yeah. coupon thing you should be you should be rolling out three to four new SKUs in the next three months like mm -hmm. and then just and just hammer it in 2018 because you've already got the customer base that Amazon will allow you to target. Now you can use the coupon, uh, you know, platform and just launch. Yeah, you're sure. I mean, his impressions. People dream of those impressions. Oh today. my gosh! You know, yeah, like it's, insane. But exactly. So you got to tailor to that market. And, and again, you know, Bill's a great friend of ours, and I love you, Bill, if you're listening. But you know, it's a composition. It depends what you want to go for and have. You yeah. know, it's uh, he he knows what he has to do. It's just that you know. I think what happens when you have success on your first product, you're you're afraid to fail on your second and third, yeah, or they don't right. live up to they don't live up to your expectations. Oh, I'm only doing ten a day, you know. And then you're like, okay, well, it's kind of like me with my weight loss. You know, one week I lose seven pounds, and then the next week I lose uh, uh, only a pound, and I'm like, ugh, I'm doing all this just to lose a pound. Do you right. know what I'm saying? But you got to look at I got to look at a pound. I've lost eight pounds on two weeks. I've lost ten pounds in three weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of the it way adds up. It, it, adds it adds up. up. It's, it's kind of that compound effect that we talk about in the book that I love so much because it's it's small, but but over time they they build and and they you know and, they just kind of keep growing. So I know Chris reasons, is trying to get in here, Scott. That you and I kind of <laughs> shoot for singles on most of these products. Like when we talk about ten by ten by one, yes, first of all, that is actually the numbers that we shoot for, and second of all, like. The reason we do that is because we know that one, it's way easier to find four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve of those than it is to find twelve products that are going to sell a hundred units a day. 
but it is also significantly more consistent, right? Scott, mm -hmm. like I just pulled yeah. up our fetcher for the new brand and we're less than halfway through the day, uh, the Amazon day that is since Amazon's on Pacific time. Right. Our number three bestseller and our top three products have been kind of floating around this week is at 10 sales already. What mm -hmm. is normally our bestseller is at nine and our third bestseller, the one that's been kind of flirting with the top two spots all week is at eight. So we're almost at 10 a day on three of those products already today. And we're less than halfway through the day. Like we're not, none of the numbers in the new brand are coming from a single like home run product. No. Mm -hmm. There's a couple solid singles. Yep. There's a, a, a sacrifice fly in there <laughs> product. And there's a bunt or two and all mm -hmm. of those get runners on base. Yeah. I would rather have everybody on my team hit a single at every at bat than have one guy hit a home run every third inning, yeah. right? Like we'd be scoring all day. And that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for consistency and long-term viability. Scott, if one of those ASINs got knocked out, it wouldn't, I mean, it would make us upset, but it wouldn't really impact right. business tremendously over a long period of time because mm -hmm. we're losing a portion, not the entire revenue stream. And it's just like being dependent on a single platform. You don't ever want to be single product specific if you can avoid it. Now, mm -hmm. obviously when you first launch, you're going to be dependent on that one product, but you should be looking for some complimentary things that you can launch with it to lift that burden off of your shoulders. Yeah. Uh, Charles says, looking great, Dom. He said, I need to get on the Dom weight loss plan, maybe bundle that and sell it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Dom, we still got to get you on a podcast and, uh, and talk yeah. through uh, what has happened here in the past seven, eight months. Uh, it's been pretty. Uh, it's been a pretty awesome journey, so we're going to have to uh, do a recap. We'll probably have to do a recap right in February because I think that's when we actually got together on that, right? Yeah, uh, February eighth, I think. Was it okay? Hey, you know what? That's going to be almost the. Uh, that's almost going to be the celebration of the third year of the podcast too. Isn't that funny? I think yeah. it's February fourth. Um, okay. I think is the anniversary. So maybe we'll have to do a a, so a special gonna, episode there. How we we hit over ten million downloads and lost one hundred and thirty five pounds or something like that. So I'll pencil myself in uh, for episode five hundred right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Schaefer. You got four hundred. I want five hundred. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Uh, uh, anyway, um, okay, moving on. If anybody has any questions, I uh, should have said this before. You, we're just kind of like talking like amongst ourselves, uh, but there's a bunch of you on. Um, I did want to just say, if you guys got any questions or anything, let us know. Um, Black Friday stuff, Cyber Monday stuff, let us know. Anything on the new coupon thing, let us know on that as well. Um, the one thing I do want to just kind of bring up that's been kind of on my mind is, you know, and I think I, I kind of remembered this once I took that picture, uh, what was it, a week and a half ago of me in the warehouse, one of the warehouses where I had like 3,000 units I was surrounded by that I said it was going to turn into $30,000. Um, that was like our third or fourth SKU that we launched, right? So the first SKU, we're actually right now liquidating it. We're still making money, but we'd rather take our money and put that into something else versus that one. That was kind of like really low barrier to entry. And we may still keep it. We have actually one other one that we may liquidate, but we're still selling probably two or three a day, sometimes four. But that one there may be a, something what we, we, we might play around with like a lead offer, even on you know a funnel or something like that. But we launched the first two SKUs, maybe even the third. I think it's, yeah, the, it was the fourth SKU. The third, the sec, or the, the third SKU, um, now we have four variations with those four variations. And this is how variations works. And I, I know Dom knows this and he loves this. You know, we launched two different SKUs starting and we were giving, we were getting probably on average about eight to 10 sales a day with the two. Then we added a third and a fourth. And then all of a sudden now we're averaging between 17 and 22, 24. And yesterday, I think, Chris, we that that product with all four SKUs outperformed our other two bestsellers. So that's what we're saying. Like, it doesn't mean that the one product is always going to outperform. Yet that's why you need diversify or diversifying your uh, your SKUs. Um, so um, looks like Dom has a situation at the door there. Um, let him in. They can buy. He's getting, he's getting a delivery. What, what do they uh, need to do? Yeah, look, and, at the, look at the jacket behind you, Dom? No, is that what they yeah. need? No, my uh, my lovely wife is uh, screaming at me anything over here. I don't know. <laughs> Get off! We gotta right. work. No. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, and Scott, you're gonna see that a lot of times with variations, right? If you if you hit something and you bring in more traffic, which you will with variations in a lot of cases, because you different 
versions of the product they're going to rank for different terms even if it's just something as simple as a color variation showing up for everything related to blue garlic press and red garlic press and black garlic press all of those weird combinations of things that people can type in you have a better chance of showing up right for all of those things and then they come to the listing and they have the chance to select the thing that they resonate with the best in terms of the color or the size or whatever that is so you see a traffic increase in a lot of cases but you also see a conversion rate increase in a lot of cases because people have a choice of the thing versus just coming and go oh i don't like that shade of blue mm -hmm. right but i might not like that shade of blue but that black is really cool looking in this mm -hmm. product so i'm gonna buy it versus bouncing back to the sales page or to the to the search engine page and looking for one that is a better shade of blue does that make sense yep yeah absolutely um the other thing i just want to mention here real quick because we always talk a lot about the wins but i want to talk about a couple of things that happened this past week actually a couple weeks um where you know could have taken people and turned them away from even doing this and getting really frustrated um we had two products two SKUs that were supposed to land by fourth quarter and uh come to find out they failed inspection um, or one of them failed inspection. The other one we got pushed back. I think we got pushed back because the owner of the manufacturer put other people ahead of us or something. And then um, the quality didn't come through as we wanted anyway. So there was just some issues there. So we were planning on getting these two new SKUs ready here for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And we were able to take care or take advantage of this fourth quarter traffic. And guess what? we're not gonna be able to launch these products. And we had to fight for a refund, which we ended up getting. And our um, agent is probably going to be leaving that company and uh, probably working for us privately, uh, which is pretty awesome. So that's kind of good, but still we're in transition. We actually have to figure out a couple of new factories. Um, we gotta figure out where we're gonna get this new product or these two new products made. Um, so we're kind of back to the drawing board in a sense, right? We you know, we were ready to launch. So that could be discouraging. That could be frustrating. But guess what? Because we started this seven, eight months ago, we've got other things in the works. So we're not just banking on that. So that's kind of where you, you kind of put the time and energy in doing the sourcing, doing the product research, all that stuff. And you get some products kind of in motion. You might put a down payment on one. And while that one's kind of coming in, you start working on the next one, even though maybe you might not be launching the next one yet. Get those products in line, get them lined up. Um, so I just want to let people know, like everything isn't rosy. Uh, you know, we had a kind of a rough week in a sense. Uh, my partner was ready to you know, pull their hair out because it was frustrating. I mean, we were so close to getting these things and boom, there it is not there now. So, um, yeah, it can get frustrating, but you know, there's a lot of upside too. Um, all right, Chris, what else do we want to dive into here before we, uh, maybe turn it over to some questions? I think that was it. I mean, we got a whole bunch of questions rolling in. Oh, so let's, let's just go. Let's just go answer uh, answer some of those questions. Then Nick Gamble wants to know: Does Amazon target previous buyers with new coupon offers via email? No. Right now, all they're targeting them with is the coupon page. If it's an untargeted offer, meaning you make it available to anyone, it'll show up if they type in any generic search. It shows up on the search engine results page. Yeah. And any offer, whether it's targeted or untargeted, will show up on your product detail page. So they'll see it in the coupons page. If it's depending on how you target it, they'll also see it on the product page or on the search results and the product page. So they would have to hit your products page to know that. But if you have an email list, you can email them and let them know that, uh, which is kind of cool. So, hey, I, I'm not going to give you a promo code. There's actually a deal just for you on Amazon. That would And Scott, that's something we might want to try, you know, for all of you cool people who <laughs> we know bought this product. Mm -hmm. Let's you know, we'll give you a little bit of a special deal or yeah. some of you might see a discount, right? Do it like a, like a dice game or something, right? There's a chance mm -hmm. you'll see it. Um, but no, Amazon's not emailing about that. Armin wants to know, I'm selling products in the U S and I want to launch the same products in the UK. Should I use the same UPC or a new one? If you're launching the same product, it would be the same UPC. It's mm -hmm. called a universal product code. You can also use an EIN or an EAN number. It depends on if, if they'll take your UPC, then use that. If not, yeah. you need to use an EAN. Uh, Doug wants to know, he said, I'm considering putting my savings into black Friday slash cyber Monday retail ARB that could potentially give me the startup cash for my first private label product. Does that sound like a good strategy? And Dom, I want to get your thoughts on this, but my initial gut feel on this is maybe, maybe not, or it mm. depends based on the deals that you get, right? The big deals that you're going to see, everybody's going to go get 
and you're going to end up with a whole bunch of sellers. Retail ARB is usually better if you're the person that finds the deal and it's not something that's blasted everywhere. Now, if you live somewhere like regionally, like Pennsylvania and Scott, you may have had these in New York. Do you remember Ollie's Bargain Outlet? Mm, uh, not Ollie's, no. Ollie's is like this regional place that has some really cool like deals and bargains. If you have some regional places like that, that might be a good place to go because they always run a, a good Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale and not everybody is going to get that. If you're thinking you're going to take that money and roll it into a bunch of the Best Buy TVs, uh, those kinds of things, I would probably avoid that. Mm. Uh, one, because they're usually not the greatest you know, pieces mm. of electronics. Two, because anybody that understands retail ARB could go out and do the same thing. Um, and I would say that that money is probably better used somewhere else. But Dom, I want to get your opinion on that as well. Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so, uh, no, actually, that act, that uh, that question, same question, actually came up in uh, the one kfasttrack.com Facebook page. So, okay, uh, so, somebody had asked us, "Is it good time now? What like what tradition that we did for all the years on Black Friday?" Again, we don't really have Black Friday, or we didn't when I first started this. But the last, you know, eight years, we kind of follow ten years. The retail's kind of followed the U.S. So we have our thing called uh, Boxing Day, which is the day out, day after Christmas, which is kind of like Black Friday. Again, I never understood Black Friday why you put everything on sale before Christmas, but people are willing to pay full retail for everything. Where our, our our Boxing Day is okay, liquidate all the Christmas stuff, liquidate all the toys that don't sell, that didn't sell, to get them off your shelf. But besides that, so what I had said is we actually would never ever go after the big targeted the the 50 per store or two per store you know TVs microwaves just a waste of time you're not going to make enough profit you're going to make profit on it but you're going to stand in line for hours so what we did is we basically looked through all the flyers and all that type of stuff uh, all the you know all the online flyers and we kind of I guess you know the three R's. We we planned our route, our route, and our routine on that. And I'd actually would send teams, and we kind of specifically went. So if somebody had Bogo on on their video games, buy one get one free, or this this company was clearing out all their CDs for a dollar, or that type of stuff, right? Media mm. stuff or toys. All toys are fifty percent off. We would hit those locations because, I mean, there'd still be some demand. People would still be there for that stuff, but not, you know, people aren't fighting over it like they would a you know two hundred dollar fifty five inch TV and stuff. So that's what I would do. Uh, any of the hot product, you're not really going to find. It's all going to be sold out before that. What I'm saying is all the hottest toys and all the hottest electronics, you know, type of stuff, which I, is... Uh, I thought of you yesterday, Dom. Yeah. I was in a Target, and they had nine shelves worth of Hatchimals. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's... Uh, like, that's oh, uh, those aren't hard to find this year, I guess. Nice. No, no, it's dead. Uh, I, again, funny you say that because... Uh, a lot of people probably just don't know is we're doing uh, we're doing a couple other things, guys, for the retail art people is uh, we've started. I've downloaded some videos of some uh, we guys just been calling one K today hauls. So they're hauls of uh, some of the product that uh, I've purchased. Uh, a lot of it's the retro video games because that's a, a, you know, a big thing for us right now. But uh, I'm actually getting ready to shoot a video or upload it of all the hot uh, toys and electronic I that are really hot, that are flying off shelves where you can make some good margins if you can find them. So uh, that's definitely stuff you want to, you know, that you want to look at whoever's doing retail art. But I don't think you're going to be able to find them on, on, on Boxing Day or sorry, on Black Friday. So I would look for all the liquidation SKUs, the stuff that's already on sale that they're going to take another 50 to 70% off. That's what I would do, Scott and Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't line up to get two TVs. Now, what I can tell you is a trick that we used to do is we used to go with four or five people, whoever can come with you, load your car up, everyone line up and go in so then you're only a lot of times you only limit one or two per people but if you have five people with you you're gonna have right. 10 or 12 of them right and then you can put it back up so that's kind of a trick of the trade and then try to use any coupons online especially for cyber monday you know uh 15 off 20 percent off buy one get one free all that type of stuff to take advantage of to you know you can save even more money cool so. scott kind of on the flip side of that for private label sellers what do you suggest we do as sellers on Black Friday? Like, is there a super ninja strategy? I know we've briefly talked about this in the past. We can't all, uh, you know, be Nick Gamble and get a lightning deal on Black Friday and sell all of our inventory. Uh, and I know he's bummed this year because he actually didn't get a Black Friday one. Uh, and I told well, him it's because Amazon's mad at him for selling too much. I think you kind of know where I'm going to go with this. But um, number one, just understand that there is going to be a ton of traffic. So regardless of what you do, you'll generally get more traffic. So you'll get more sales. P 
period. Um, if you want to, you can lower your price a little bit. So that way there, there's a sale price during this time. So then again, it could be like that if you don't have a lightning deal. Um, I would say if you're gonna do the coupon, the new coupon thing, it's going to probably get saturated with other people doing the same thing, but it's worth a try. Um, but if you have been following the podcast for well, the past six, eight months, and you heard this thing called like building an email list, um, then I would get those people ready like now. Like I would probably send an email out Monday letting them know that, hey, this coming Friday, we are going to be doing something awesome for only 12 hours, something like that. And then I would email them Friday morning, Friday afternoon, and Friday night, all right? That's what I would do. And the thing is, is you gotta make it really cool though, and you gotta make it really good. So it's not just like, oh, I'm gonna give you 5% off. I guess like, we should probably do that now that you just threw that out. Well, I'm kind of doing that to kind of get you to <laughs> do that. Um, like, Chris, you're taking notes on this, right? Yeah. That's <laughs> Chris, that is the structure that I wanna follow. Um, <laughs> could, you, could you get that structure for us, please? Um, so yeah, so that's, I mean, We've got, what do we got now, Chris? About 16,000 on that list? Yeah. Yeah, so we've got about 16,000 on our list. Um, we've built it over the past seven, eight months. Um, and now we are going to be sending out, you know, an email and then reminding them about that special. So that, like right now is really the time because we have a lot of things going for us. Number one, we've got a reason to email them. Number two, we got, a, we got something that we're going to give them that's cool. So it, it kind of brings goodwill back to us. The other thing is we have a deadline, which then kind of gives them some scarcity where we have to kind of do it before, you know, the day's over or whatever. And we get, we have a chance to remind them more than once because if you say, well, I don't want to email them twice in one day, that seems like I'm over emailing them. You're reminding them because they're busy and just say that, say, Hey, I know I, I'm emailing you twice today and I apologize, but I know how busy it can be. I know I'm busy. Heck, I'm still trying to get cleaned up from yesterday's dinner or whatever, but I wanted to shoot this quick email to you. Just want to let you guys know today at 10 o'clock PM Eastern time, you know, the 30% the off sale for black Friday expires. Have a great day, you know, enjoy some leftover, you know, turkey or whatever. <laughs> Right. It's like, like, like literally that's what we're talking about. And when you have the power and the leverage of doing that, it's, you know, to me, it, you've got such a huge advantage. Um, so that's what I would say, Chris, but if you don't have that right now, then you can't necessarily do that. Now, you know, we're talking like a week away. So there's not a ton that you're going to do if you haven't prepped up to this point, other than if you have an email list, start drafting those emails, start coming up with a reason why. The other thing is use the new coupon thing if you can. Start getting those approved like right now so that way there you can start to uh, you know, connect with your past customers and stuff. Um, so that, that's what I would do, Chris. So Scott, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Just something that popped into my head and you could do it for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. You could do it for like a 12 days of Christmas thing, like the one that we're talking about doing in the new brand. Yep. What are your thoughts on doing like a giveaway a day for, you know, so, hey, go share this piece of content or go do something. Give us, you know, give us a piece of content, even if you have some, so like camping, right? Or fishing, send in a, a quick video to our Facebook page you know, for a chance to win this and we'll give one away every day for the next 12 days or whatever. I like that. Um, it, it's an excuse to promote and you get a lot of, of social traction out of that. So you're yeah. saying, you know, this is, this is what we're doing for Black Friday or Cyber Monday or for Christmas. It's our special thing. We're going to give away one a day. Here's what we need from you. Mm -hmm. um, is that, do you think that might work? I do. I do. And I, I know Mike Jackness, that that's what he did for his color at site. Um, he gave away a set of $40 adult coloring pencils, um, which were $40. And he did that every day for like 30 days, something like that. And he built a pretty massive email list. And that's what's kind of really helped him drive that business and, and get to a seven figure brand in like less than a year and a half. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that can definitely work. Um, also, I think I want to highlight this really quickly, Chris, um, cause I know you and I talked about it. We just, we just wrapped up a contest that we did for the new brand. And it was really successful, just under 6,000 emails. Um, and it cost us like about 900 bucks total with the prizes and everything. Um, we are waiting a little bit to start the new one because we want it to end just before Christmas. So Chris, why don't you talk a little bit about that? And you know what, actually, let's give the, the link to the workshop because if anybody's new and they haven't attended the workshop, it'll kind of lay everything out for you because you still have time. Like right now, take advantage of the traffic, take advantage of people wanting to get a gift 
for someone in their family or something like that, you can take advantage of that. Um, so the amazing seller.com forward slash build list that should be up on the screen for you. Um, yeah, and I think Scott, I think what we had talked about doing was basically starting at the 20th and running it to the 20th so yeah. that we would have basically 72 shopping hours, right? Yeah. Cause if they get it ordered by the 23rd, Amazon's going to try to get it there by Christmas Eve. Right. Uh, at least that's the, that's kind of the way it worked last year. So, yeah. you know, we may start it a day earlier than that just to, to make sure right. that we're, we're in the clear there, but yeah, one of the reasons we're doing that is because we can significantly grow the list, but we can also get a huge push of sales into Christmas. And having that contest gives us a good solid reason to continue to email people over and above everything else, right? Hey, I just want to let you know there's five days left in the contest. Go ahead and, and share it with your friends. By the way, we're doing something special for the next three days, right? It's going to give us an excuse to email that list a little bit more coming into Christmas. And we've said this in the past, like you don't need an excuse other than whatever the excuse is. Right. Right. And we talked about the study where they like had people in line at the post office and they asked, you know, can I get in front of you because I'm in a hurry? And right. the same number of people let that person in front of them as somebody like me who said, can I get in front of you because I want to, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, can I get in front of you? was the magic words. It didn't matter what they added to the back end of that. So we're going to be rolling out a new contest and we actually have two, one for sure, because it's sitting inbound right now and they've checked in everything else that we sent in on Tuesday and they haven't checked that in yet. And it's driving me insane. Um, one new SKU and there may actually be another one between now and then, depending on what happens uh, that, that we're trying to launch rolling into Christmas. We know this is going to be a big part of the year for us. And so we're trying to do kind of everything we can to, to really steamroll that forward. Say that again. <laughs> I, I don't know, you, you, you actually caught up at the end there for me. <laughs> so we're trying to do everything we can to kind of steamroll that forward. And so we're building our list going into 2018. I almost said 2017. It's the end of 2017. It if is. You really know what year it is. Uh, going into 2018, we're going to build that list even bigger. We're going to yes. get ourselves in front of as many people as we possibly can. Yeah. We're going to try to promote as much content as we can. So doing another giveaway for us is an excuse to do all of those things. Exactly. And it's going to help us if we roll into 2018. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I just think that, uh, you know, like right now is a, is a great time um, to kind of get going and, and start doing that. So, yeah, if you guys are holding off on that, like 2018 to me, it's like, you know, it's the year to really go and start really focusing on building out either your brand or your sales channel. Um, and then just really have the power and the leverage of being able to spike sales when you need to. Or if you run out of inventory, you have a way to get the, that inventory back in. Um, and then from there, get sales. Um, so Chris, what else we got here? Uh, got Great question from Tony. He minutes. said, do you monitor the opt out rates of your email list? If I get too many emails, I leave Tony. There's a couple things with that one. Obviously we, we monitor the opt out rates there. We know that when we email more, we're going to have a higher unsubscribe rate, but mm -hmm. that's actually okay with us. Right? Yep. It means you're not a fit for the list in a lot of cases. Now, if we send out, like we send at least one email a week and if we send our weekly email and we get a higher opt out rate than normal that can be a flag for us, right? If we normally have 10 people unsubscribe and we get a thousand and you got to check the content of the email, see how you offended right. people, right? Figure out what happened there. But for the most part, your opt out rates are going to be fairly consistent. You're going to get a couple people that opt out every time because they they weren't a fit for the list or they just don't resonate with your content anymore. That's totally cool. And we're fine with that. You need to expect some people to unsubscribe and that's perfectly normal. It's perfectly fine. And I like when they unsubscribe because if they don't want to hear from me, I don't want to send them my stuff, right? I don't want to mess up their inbox. No, and I don't want them to mess up mine by just emailing me really weird things in response to the emails that I send. And, you know, occasionally people will say, how did I even get on your list? Whatever. Again, just unsubscribe them, let them know that they're taken care of and, and go from there. I wouldn't worry too much about it. The other thing, Scott, that I wanted to talk about with this is we need to make sure that as marketers, as business owners, we don't make the mistake of assuming that we are our customers. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. There are a lot of things that I do from a marketing perspective because they work that because I know what they are and I see them, I don't necessarily like them when other people do them to me. I totally get why they do them because they work, right? Like mm. I wouldn't necessarily, if in a perfect world, I would not email you three times about our Black Friday sale. But because I know... One, I'm going to get a 25, 30% open rate every time I send that. And chances are it's going to be a different section of my list. So I want to hit as many people as possible. Two, stuff happens, right? Especially in e-commerce, 
your kid walks into the room and you put the thing in the cart and then you don't check out. I want to give you a reminder so that I'm serving you. And that's, that's kind of the mental shift that I've made, Scott, you know, we can't be afraid to market to people. And no. yes, some people are going to get mad at that. But if you look at it from a service perspective, I'm not emailing you because I demand that you buy my stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you a reminder. And I truly am sending that reminder out because if you want to take advantage of it, I want you to take advantage of it. If not, just close the email. Right. Right. And that, that's what I've started to do as a, as a consumer as well. So I just wanted to point those two things out. Scott, uh, Min wants to know, I have a product I think I can launch in December. Should I just wait until January? Uh, my question would be why? Why wait? Right? I mean, Dom, like why, why, why wait? Why don't we just, why don't we just launch when we can launch? Like, right? Like send it in. Like, why are you waiting until January? Right. I mean, no. if, you're, if you're asking, should I invest the money and wait until after the first year? Cause I'm going to get a little tax money back and I'm going to have it. Then yeah, wait till January 1st. But right now, um, I'd want to get started as soon as possible. And I don't care if I'm missing the boat on the fourth quarter. There's always four, the first quarter and second quarter, third quarter. Yeah. For Somebody in, uh, breakthrough. You asked me yesterday, you know, is it like a scary time to launch a product? If, if I can't launch until January, like, should I hold off on it? at that point, because January is going to be slow. And I said, well, actually, January isn't slow. When you think about it from an e-commerce perspective, people are stuck in their houses if they live in the northern part of the US. Like three quarters of the world is stuck under snow in January. And so like, they're still buying stuff and e-commerce gives them an easy outlet to do it. Yeah. July and August actually tend to be the slowest e-commerce months. Yeah. And we still launch products in July and August because after July and August, there's September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, and June, yeah. right? Like we have the entire rest of the year. So if you have a product on hand, unless there's some weird reason that you can think of, right? Like Scott, right. like you said, I know for a fact that if I save it till the first and don't send it in, then I'm going to get this really cool tax break. And I'm actually going to make money by not launching it. Right. Get the product in there. It's the same thing. And Dom, I know you disagree slightly on the packaging, right? Like just get it in, get it up. Don't let that well, stop you from launching the product. And Scott, I've said it probably 20 times this week. Now and I'm going to say it again. Done is better than perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. Get it in, get it launched and then iterate. Then worry about the other things that we can improve. Take the customer. Wait, wait, wait actual customers, make the packaging better, make the insert better, get your trademark and get brand registered, but get the product in up and selling. Yeah. What'd you say, Don? We never worry about, we never worry about the quarter or the month it is. I, we work on 30, 60, 90 day intervals. That's how we work where we release, release products. So anything we're working on now, I'm not rushing to get it in for December because you're never going to get it in. But if you wait till January, you'll be like January will turn into March by the time you actually get it mm -hmm. in. So if you start now, then you'll have it in by February. Yeah. So that's the, that's the way you got to lo look at it, especially if you're sourcing overseas. If you're sourcing within the U.S., you probably get it done in about a week, two weeks if you're really quick. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, we always look at it in segments. I'm not going to stop, you know, sourcing product right now. Now, we do between December and, and, and January. I don't, I don't tend to source any product because the numbers are inflated, so you don't get accurate numbers. So if you're looking at a product like after – you know, Black Friday or January 1st, or you'll be like, oh my God, it sells 50 units a day. You know, yeah, of course it does because people are, you know, they, they got gift certificates and they're going on Amazon and they're using them and stuff. So be really but careful. Wouldn't you that. say though on that one, Dom, that, you know, pro you're probably going to launch something that you've already picked before the big, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I, I, yeah, know, yeah. I know you've already got a list of products you're going to get to exactly. and, yeah, and yeah. I do and Chris does. And it's, and it's like, you're, you're going to kind of yeah. like, so you're not really, I would say then pause your product research for maybe numbers that's what I meant. Yeah. in, in a that's certain right, right. period of time, yeah. but it doesn't mean you still should just stop. I mean, it's like yeah. me, like I, I mean, I ran home after that Jeep incident, right? I, I started digging into Jeep accessories and I'm like, holy crap, like yeah. there's, there's a market here, right? So I would just keep it on my radar, you know, but um, yeah, yeah. Even, even stuff that we, even stuff that we've had issues with same type in the back end, something happened, the manufacturer changed, we had issues with the thing. We wanted it in for December 1st. It might not get in till December, till January 1st. Now I'm not, we're not going to say, okay, stop the order. That's it. Yep. Forget we're it. Not we're launching. Just, we're not launching. It's not going to be for Christmas. We're going to lose our shirts. Just keep doing it because yeah. you, you still got to launch it at some point. And then, yeah. you know, and the only problem is, as I've always said that I usually use Christmas and everyone should to validate your product. Never give up. Give it at least a year yeah. because Christmas will help you rank for your keywords. And then in January, February is actually sometimes when you really know if your product's a good product because you'll be like, oh, you know, you'll, just, you'll, you'll go from zero to 
five or six or seven or 10 a day during Christmas. And then you'll be up to five or six after that. And then it'll just snowball. So yeah. Christmas usually validates if, if, you know, if you go to 10 and then you drop down to zero and one or two, then you pretty, you might have a product that doesn't sell very well. But, you know, as far as launching, no, no, never look at the, the Christmas date or the cutoff. I mean, I would want to send in stuff December 15th because you'll never right. get live, but. Well, Besides we had somebody that. in inside of TAS Breakthrough U today, Scott, that said, hey, I launched this week. I made the mistake. I only ordered 200 units. I've sold 45 already. Yeah. Well, like that's, that's a good problem to have. I know I have a quality problem, but like, you know, I'm in a category that's going to be a little more seasonal. Should I place another order or should I just let it run out of stock and see what happens? I was like, well, if you have the money, place the order, right? Like, yeah, you're not going to get it till the 10th of December and you're potentially going to miss out on some sales but if you get it on the sure. 10th you get it turned around it's going to be there for a few days before christmas you're going to pick back up right and yeah, i mean if you're confident you're going to sell through that in the rest of the year then why not go ahead and place the order get it up get it in don't take your 200 units and and run away right just roll right. with it yeah unless you're unless you don't think you can get your 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 reindeer ears in time for christmas then you might not want to right. launch you, them but i, you I know. would not order 5000 santa hats right now yeah yeah exactly you know you're too late to the you're, you're too late to the party, but yeah, for sure. You can go. If you sell 45, you should already be ordering them now. Right. You know, it's not 200. It's not that many units. Scott, Sean Matheson is in the house. He What's says, up, what up? Where is? Jeff said, is it better to have the manufacturer print the FNSKU directly on the box or should I get them stickered and then have them put the sticker on the box? If they can print it directly on, just get them printed directly on. Yeah. You're saving yourself a step and the box 20%. doesn't fall off. Yeah. Stickers can fall off and that can lead to misplaced inventory, some of those kinds of things. If they won't print it directly on the box, then get it stickered. To me, it's six of one, half a dozen of another. Get it on the box, have the manufacturer do it. Don't stand there and stick them, sticker them yourself. It's probably not worth your time unless they're going to charge you like a dollar a unit to do it. They're right. not. It's going to be a couple cents at most. Hey, I want to apologize. I just put a lifesaver in. I hope that's not rude or anything. I found one in my pocket and I wanted to get it in. <laughs> I wanted to. Is that okay that I did that live? Yeah, I right, found Scott. it. Kind of I, was it fuzzy? Yeah, you're gonna. Have to... No, it was in my. Po no, no, no. It was in a wrapper. Yeah. Yeah. It was in a wrapper. I, I actually had it yeah. from last night's workshop in my pocket because sometimes I need a little. I need a little. Uh, you know, a little moisture nice. in the throat, nice. and um, I, I didn't even That's think good. about it. I just popped it in my mouth. I go, maybe that. Maybe I shouldn't have did that. You know. You know. Uh, this loose lifesaver bouncing around in your pocket. That's all I got fuzz on it and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Found inventory. Found Found you know what? That. You know what we didn't you know, talk about. Off. We did talk about uh, storage inventory costs. That was nice last week. Mm. Oh my god! Because it came yeah, out right the first their month. First, so uh, their first long-term storage fee last week. Yeah, I know it was awesome. Or, sorry, Q4 so, monthly storage fee. Awesome. Every every month, I'm losing a small car purchase. It's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. I could have a uh, I could have 14 Elantras here at the end of the month, but <laughs> by the end of the year, it's crazy. 1990 Elantras, but still. <laughs> No, no, I'm talking like thirteen thousand dollar launcher. Here, here's cash for it. I want on a launcher, or I'll give it for storage fees. You, you pick your choice. So it's a scam. I hate it so much, but whatever. What can you do? At least we didn't wake up screaming and yelling this time. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, oh my God. says yes, Scott. Your lifesaver is very rude. Uh, <laughs> David, <laughs> David wants to know. He said the partner and I are about to embark on product research. Is there any tips or pitfalls to avoid so we don't get fooled by the Q4 numbers? If you're doing solid product research, I would say you probably don't have to worry too much about it with the exception of just double check checking your trends, right? If you're taking a look at BSR and the BSR is consistent for the rest of the year, then you don't have to even really take the sales numbers with a grain of salt. You can be fairly consistent on that. Chris, Go I'm calling a, I'm calling a timeout. Go for it. You you just you just failed to to tell uh who was it that that just David. asked it? David we just covered this last night. We went through the three steps and how to validate and how to go through all the history and all that stuff. I was going to do that after, but that's fine. All right, well, you should do it first. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's this lifesaver that's just bringing a little bit more spark to my uh, spunky. I'm he gets spunky. A life I'm spunky. Taking that <laughs> um, we just did this last night on a workshop, which was awesome, by the way, which actually Mr. B had um, emailed me this morning. I posted his little his little uh, blurb there and he said why do you need netflix when you have tas podcast binge listener so yeah so um it's it's there so anyway mr b um thumbs up um 
but yeah, we, we covered this last night. And really what we're doing here, doesn't matter if you're in fourth quarter and you're seeing inflated numbers. What if, what if you find products in a certain category that just launched and you're just looking at the numbers like these are awesome numbers. The, the reviews are low. And all you're doing is looking at the surface. You're not looking at the history. So now what if they ran a promotion? What if they have a big email list? What if they just blasted it? What if they just got an influencer to do their promotion? And now those numbers are skewed, but you're thinking it's not fourth quarter. So they must be right. They must be true. No, you have to go through and do all of the background check in a sense. We show you exactly how to do it. We did it last night on a workshop. Uh, and uh, what's the link, Chris? Theamazingseller.com forward slash just workshop. Uh, Will that take him here? No, I'll paste it. Okay. Um, so we're, we'll get that in there. But so basically we covered that. So if you have not seen that, go watch that this weekend. Um, but basically it's going through and looking at the history, looking at the BSR history, but then also looking at how long the seller has been selling. So now you can kind of trace what, you know, that market and what that BSR and that on that product has been doing over time. That's important. And we want to look at the trends. Um, so all of that stuff um, you want to do. So that's what you would do. And I had to call a time out there because Chris, you were explaining all that and we just already covered it. So just go watch the, the replay. It's all right there. Um, <laughs> all right. What else we got? We got a couple more minutes. Then I got to go. I'm going to a four o'clock movie. I got to, I got plans here. All right. We got one other question before we wrap it up from Marco who says, how about shipping cost increases for Q4? Obviously they're higher. What are your guys experience by, by what period are shipping fees steady? For our stuff, it hasn't really changed, Scott. Like we just, we got that big order in. They're up a little bit in terms of coming from China. It doesn't cost you really any more to ship stuff into Amazon. So we're not worried about that well, too much. But we, I, I will say though, um, we did just experience on the air shipping and that did have an increase. Like 15%? Um, yeah, it was like 15, maybe even 20%. Um, by C, it's pretty much stayed the same. So you know, there could be some, especially with more shipping and stuff, it's, you know, in this time of year, you could experience it. But again, I always say, well, you know, you know, if you just want to get launched because your first run is not necessarily going to be profitable, why not just go ahead and get it launched? Right. And Sean passes it. <laughs> Sean's getting ready to hit a $400,000 a month next month. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, know, he knows storage fees, Sean. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and Sean Sean is doing some pretty cool stuff, man. I, I got to give him some props on that. Uh, Ian wants to know, Scott, before we get off, and it's actually probably a, a good way to wrap up. He said, what is the deadline to submit the video for the TAS story thing? Oh, we forgot, all, we forgot to even talk about that. Chris, where's your notes? <laughs> I figured we were going to do it at the wrap-up, which is what we okay. had talked about before I, we got I, I actually forgot about it, and I, I actually talked about that in the email today. Um, yeah, so what we're doing, um, Dom, I don't know. Did you did you hear what we're doing? you probably been no. out of the loop, haven't you? I've been out of the loop, yeah. All right, I here's, what, here's what I we're doing. The, I didn't even know the show was still on. I thought it was gone, but, that you know, it's <laughs> been discontinued. Uh, no, so what we're, what we're doing is um, between now and December, like, I don't know, Chris, what is it, like, this first or second week in December. We haven't decided on the on the official cutoff. What we're doing is um, we're going to give away two scholarships to the private label classroom in TAS Breakthrough U, which is basically uh, just about a fifteen hundred dollar value on each of those um, scholarships. So what we're doing is we're giving that away to anyone um, that well, you have to to qualify. You have to basically just submit your story, your TAS story, that is. So okay. if you go to theamazingseller.com forward slash story, I shot a quick little video explaining what you need to do. But in a nutshell, it's this. Number one, tell us how long you've been a listener of the podcast. And number two, give us one takeaway or one thing that the TAS podcast has helped you. Shoot a quick video. Um, Chris has two videos showing you where to upload it and how to upload it. Very easy. You can use YouTube or Facebook, super easy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through those. And then we may even spotlight a few of those, um, put them on the blog, put them on the podcast. Um, and then from there, we're going to pick two winners. And those winners are going to be announced and we're going to give away those scholarships. So that's what we're doing. Um, so I really want to hear your story. I I'm doing it kind of selfishly because I want to see you on camera and I want to hear your story. Whenever we do a live event, I get to see people in person. Um, you know, Sean, uh, you know, that was just on here. I mean, I, I know Sean, when he came to our first uh, live event, I think he was doing about 50000 a month, maybe sixty. 
Um, and then he, the, the next one he was doing about a hundred and now he's at like 400. Um, so just insane growth. Um, but he's driven and he's doing a great job and I still got to get Sean on the podcast. Sean, you promised me you were coming on the podcast. Um, he's too busy. Yeah, I know. Right. Um, so anyway, I want to be able to see you and, and really just hear your story and two minute video, three minute video. It doesn't have to be that long. Um, but just tell us where you're from, you know, who you are a little bit, of, uh, a little bit about, you know, how you got even interested, how you discovered the podcast maybe. And then from there, how long you've been a listener and then just give us a little bit of the story. Like how has it helped you? Uh, again, I mean, I've got a lot of letters on my wall over here, a ton, and I keep getting them, but I want, I want videos. I want to actually see you guys in person. So that's my little incentive for you guys is I want to give away two scholarships. We're going to be announcing that probably first or second week in December. Um, so just go to theamazingseller.com forward slash story. And uh, I look forward to hearing your story. I really do. Um, so yeah, that's that. And um, what else we got, Chris? Oh, starting Monday, we are kicking off a five-part series on the podcast. Chris and I spent a good portion of what Tuesday and Wednesday yeah. together recording. Um, and uh, we recorded um, basically kind of like our five phase workshop, but we broke it down in audio in chunks. So we basically went through all five modules um, or five phases, five steps. We call that our five step roadmap. And we cover that through five parts on the podcast. So each episode has a specific part that we focus on. That'll be uh, starting Monday. We're going to skip and ask Scott on next Friday and just keep going with the series. And then the following week, we're going to pick back up with the Ask Scott session again. Um, got a lot of cool things coming, um, a lot of great interviews, a lot of great people, a um, couple of live events we're going to be attending, which I'll be announcing those here soon. A couple are in the works. And maybe in the first part of the year, we may be doing a TAS uh, event of some kind, just not sure yet. So stay in the loop on that. We'll, we'll keep you guys posted. Um, but yeah, Chris, that's about all I got. Don, what about you? You got anything else you want to wrap up with? Uh, yeah, I just want to, uh, give a shout out to all the one K fast trackers. They're just mm. uh, hustling like crazy. I'm seeing guys are s sending, you know, lots of boxes and, uh, uh, the, the normal suspect Kavla's there. She's uh, hustling, pushing some stuff in. So that, that's good to see. And, uh, for everybody that's doing one K, uh, fast track that's in it already uh we're going to be releasing some uh haul videos i talked about that earlier i've uploaded some of the stuff so that's going to be exciting it'll be a new segment of uh the tas brand in our youtube video right so if yeah, anybody yeah. Wants to pay attention to those they'll be up probably within the next week i'm also getting ready to to shoot uh like i said some some of the hottest toys for christmas so if uh, anybody's doing retail R, this is going to be part of it uh, one of these right here guys nice so uh these are uh the hottest oh, Christmas gosh. so far. They are. Right. I actually had a lady at volleyball yeah. ask me the other day if, if I yeah. uh, she goes, Do you sell on Amazon? Because someone heard me talking and I go, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I go, I go, yeah. And and she's like, um, yeah, yeah. do you sell those? Whatever that thing was you just showed. Yeah, yeah. What is it called? The finger yeah. finger links. Yeah, you gotta be finger careful. Links finger links. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I heard about that. My uh my good yeah. buddy Dom had told me about it. I go, No, I don't I don't have any. She's like, Oh, if you yeah, get yeah. one, you let me know. I'll pay you. <laughs> like, yeah. Like I just picked them up for my pick a couple up for my daughter. Yeah, exactly. It's the hottest toy. So we're going to be doing that. So yeah, anybody wants to know about doing retail, I'm still not late, guys, especially with Black Friday coming in. There's lots of deals, a lot of buy one, get one, 50% off. Stuff like Sears, obviously, we know that they're closing up. Uh, you know, Toys R Us obviously is in, uh, in bankruptcy as well. So there's going to be chances they might be liquidating a lot of their dead products. So if you guys want to do that, just go to 1kfasttrack.com and, uh, you know, we'll go through everything you need to know to sell. And then uh, like uh some of the a lot of the guys actually in town some guys and gals are actually moving into private label now they're getting ready yeah. to to get ready for january 1st so it's pretty exciting the transition going from uh, from ra and not giving it up right scott chris like actually 100%. keeping it because they're still making some money right and then uh you know uh in the background you know i'm even hop scotty jr a little bit i've been on the phone back you and have. forth getting them you know getting them into the same kind of thing we have because there's definitely a market for that and uh, your daughter's you know she's hustling they've moved now so they've you know, nice and easy when you move. Everything's an FBA. You don't have to take anything with you. So yeah, and they're they're yeah. consistently they're they're consistently yeah. uh, selling. I mean, uh, just the other day, I think she had a six or a seven hundred dollar day. Um, yeah, that's so, awesome. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, she's still consistently doing. She's still hustling. She actually showed me two shopping carts she filled up there in Seattle. Nice. Again, she's she's trying to find the locations there. Um, yeah, and she yeah. found some. She was a little frustrated. She's like, I can't find them. I can't find them. And then she sent me two pictures of two shopping carts filled nice, with, nice. Uh, with some toys and stuff. Yeah, so. that, uh, that looks like one of the 1K factor. Yeah, see her. He's got his whole balcony of his top of half of his house. You just see, He's actually got full display cases. 
Nice. Uh, 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 like, 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 I don't even know what they are, but it's like that whole display. He just like took it and brought it on his shopping cart and brought it and say, yeah, I'll take all these, please. <laughs> like Moana figures or something. I'm like laughing my head off. Like not one or two, like the full retail display. It's hilarious. If you go, if you guys join 1K5, you'll have access to that group as well. There's hundreds of people in there. They're, they, I mean, the good thing now, Scott, because there's so many people in there now joining and they're doing a lot of bolo stuff, which if you guys don't know, it's be on the lookout for. So that means, you know, maybe they go to the target and they find one thing and then they sell out there, but they, the, you know, they they'll, they'll pass the favor on to, to yes. you, and then you can go to your local Target or Walmart's and mm. and find it. And then, you know, again, lots of people are like, you know, they're kind of getting frustrated now because at that time of the year, there's a lot of retail arbors out grabbing stuff. And I said, you know, everyone relies on Walmart, Target, Toys R Us. You got to get out there and find your honey hole, your honey spot. You mm. got to find liquidators. You got to find auction houses. You got to find small distributors. You know, this is, and, and then, you know, we had, I think Mike from one of our very first the classes, he found it uh, like a distributor for clothing and t-shirts and brand name t-shirts and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's got the market to himself because he's getting licensed yeah. frozen t-shirts and Disney t-shirts that nobody else has access to. So yeah, that's awesome. Anyways. Yeah. That's, that's what I want to do. And uh, yeah. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Cool. I mean, guys, like it's not too late. And if you're, if you're thinking to yourself that, you know what, it might be too late for black Friday, or I want to just get started. I don't have enough capital, um, doing retail ARB, online ARB, any of that stuff is definitely doable. And that's why I would uh, definitely look into 1kfasttrack.com. That's why we created that course. Dom leads it. Um, all the, you know, all the lessons are there for you laid out. We also do a seven day challenge there, which most of the people going through there pay for the course and then some. We've had some people that made as much as 1000 to $1,200 in just seven days from going through our seven day challenge. So definitely go check that out. If you're, if you're just getting started, maybe dipping your toe and you're just not sure if you have enough capital for the private label thing, start with retail art. And it uh, doesn't matter if you start now or you start the first of the year, you know, you can go through the 1K fast track, get all the information, get yourself ready, and then be ready to go January 1st. Because it's not just toys, it's uh, a lot of other things that you can do for retail art. So definitely go check that out if you're at all interested. Um, so that's it. I think that's it. That's going to wrap it up. Like I said, I got an appointment with my nine-year-old daughter and my wife. We're going to watch a movie. So do that and then a little dinner. And then uh, see. Um, that's I'm glad that you just asked you me that know. on the spot. I don't. It's uh, my wife recommended it. It's a good movie. Um, it's going to be great. <laughs> you um, haven't seen it yet, but it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's called Wonder. She just yelled to me. Wonder. It's with Julia Roberts. Um, oh, supposed, yeah, uh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. a sad story, yeah, uh, but a good story. It looks uh, good. And then tomorrow, Chris, I didn't even tell you this. I'm going to a Clemson game. Are nice. you? Yes, I am. Who do they play tomorrow? Um, that's another great question. I don't know. I'm, I'm actually I'm actually uh, riding up with um, one of our oh, neighbors. Oh, they play Citadel. And their, uh, their son is the drum major um, at Clemson. So, um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, I did know that. I'm a liar. Uh, yeah, they play Citadel. That should be a yeah. very, very one-sided game. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> but, but it's, it's going to be fun. Be football to watch. Yep. And it's going to be a nice day here, 65. So uh, we'll be, uh, yeah, probably sweatshirt in the morning, and we'll we'll uh, take that off in the afternoon, and we'll just hang out, do a little tailgating, and uh, be an early game. I think it's 1230. So, uh, yeah, be a, a fun day. And then uh, Wally is coming. My father, Papa V, is coming in Monday. Monday night for nice. about 10 to 12 days. So maybe we'll have to get him to make an appearance somewhere. Um, maybe talk, talk about the Navy. Or we'll, maybe we'll talk about some Navy stories or some, uh, some uh, <laughs> maybe we'll talk about, uh, you know, maybe some farm, you know, you know, farming stuff where maybe we can, we can teach people how to go get chickens and um, they can sell them. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, uh, let's wrap this up, Chris. Um, guys, if you have any other questions, drop them in the comments. Um, the, the workshop, Chris, you dropped the link there, but we'll leave that there as well. Uh, we just did a workshop last night on uh, product research. Check that out. We've got a lot of cool stuff in the pipeline coming up. I'm super excited for just this this entire you know rest of the year, but then also the beginning of next year because a lot of cool things coming and uh, super excited to share it with you guys. So that's it. That's going to wrap it up, guys. Have an awesome, amazing weekend. We'll see you later. Take care. And as always, take action. We'll see you guys. Put it in. Wait. Clubs it.